Hey everyone, welcome back. I apologize, I will take the full blame. Uh, last week was the Jared problem. My uh, my company, my app, unfortunately, uh, we had too many uh, system-wide bugs where I was just like, I'm not comfortable. Even if it's a beta, I was like, I'm not comfortable releasing it like this like you know you know users right so like there's a couple of things where it was like enter your birthday and so if you entered i was born in the year 1905 on the 75th of maruary it would cause a system-wide crash basically and i was like i don't trust it good you know so anyways that was last week I this could. week we're all good because we went in and we made placeholders and templates and stuff like that to prevent users from doing that. Because you know oh, nice. people, man. You know people. They're going to to do all kinds. Of, even in our own team, this guy, I crashed the app so many times because I would purposely goof around and put, like, weird stuff. I was like, man, I've been a gamer my whole life. I'm like, I know what it takes to break, you know, to break things. Um, so I'm really happy tomorrow it goes live. It's going to be really, really interesting. Two years of work, man. It's going to be interesting. And yeah, good luck with that. Well, and besides, guys, whenever there's a cancellation, it's always Jared's yeah, fault. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Right. This guy, I see him pop up on Steam. <laughs> it's like he's playing, what is it, Dead by Dawn or whatever it was. Dead by Daylight. Yeah. yeah. I was, my buddies wanted to play. So and it was just so funny. I'm texting him like, for years. are you alive? Like, where are you? Nothing. Oh, Radio yeah. silence. I'm like. That's yeah. always the case with you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I love always it. the case. Anyways. Um, All right, Jess. So we have stuff to talk about today. So it's going to be kind of good. We do. We do. Steven and I did a, um, a micro podcast uh, the other day. But I don't know what happened. It was really weird, man. I took it. And shoved it on my iCloud movie uh, thing. It uploaded no problem. It was only like 800 megabytes or whatever. But here at home, it was on my other computer. But here at home, when I look at it, I'm like, it's gone. So I'm like, that's weird. weird. Yeah, that's really sucks. weird. But Steven's not happy with that. Well, he doesn't even know. He doesn't that. even. He doesn't even know yet. Oh. It was. We basically talked about. Well, I'm gonna. I have to check my laptop, right? I have to just. I have to make sure that did it glitch or is it still the local files there? If the local files there, it doesn't matter. Who cares? Uh, but he wanted to talk all about uh, the Last of Us and the Fallout, both Last of Us and Fallout TV shows. Okay, um, what does he think about? What did he say about both? He loved them both. He thought they were both absolutely great. So um, the shows, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it wasn't long. It was like a thirty-minute sort of podcast thing. But I've just been so to, busy. He needs to play the Fallout games, but he won't do that, right? Well, I think he played three. I think he played Fallout three. I don't know if he if he finished it or not. It's a, such a great. That's a, such a great series. Um, yeah, but, but I don't know if do you remember. He, didn't he say he doesn't have patience for? No, no, no. Today, anymore? yeah, 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 yeah. Today, today, yeah. Good luck. Um, although, although, he uh, he did say that he's going to replay The Last of Us. So we'll see what happens because he loved the show. Guy got him that you know that sort of kick. So he bought the PS5 remaster of a remaster of a remaster, um, which I still find hilarious to be honest that they did that because it's like it came out in ps like it was literally like the last the swan song for the ps3 they remastered it for the ps4 and then they remade it for the ps5 so i was like that's a little weird but whatever speaking of remasters is it the paper mario released yeah, in this game that remaster yeah that's coming out this week i, I think. might get that but Ah uh, man, I, I always give Steven a hard time about this because every other company can't get away with this, but Nintendo is the remasters are always at discounts. Well, most of them, just exclusions like uh, Final Fantasy VII remakes, <laughs> an exclusion to a full flash bullshit. But anyways, well at least with that, they did a whole new engine, new gameplay. It's basically built from the ground up to be mm. what unquote newer. They even have new story elements, so a little bit more forgiving. But uh, Nintendo's just basically a remastered versions. Of some, uh, there's no like pretty bad a little bit. But yeah, they only, they're one of the very few companies that get away with 59 or full price AAA title content for an old old 20 year old game, right? So 
And you know why I, that is? Because it sells. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. They it's have bullshit. <laughs> they have Nintendo no fans are the worst because, <laughs> well, because Nintendo fans are the worst because they blindly buy their content with, or people that support Nintendo bl- blindly buy their content without them. being smart shoppers, right? But the thing is, I told you, I'm holding out on like discounts for their games, and they almost never go on well, discount. And if they do, it's very go. small. So. Well, it's funny, I, you know, it's funny, it's funny you say this, though. It's so funny you say this because, like, uh, Ghost of uh, Tsushima just got released, right? Um, yeah. And, you know, whatever. It's like, you know, full full price for what it is. And I saw people were complaining about it. And I was like, guys, it's the full package. It's, it's the whole thing. So it's all the DLC, all the, you know, it's literally everything, 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 everything. And I know... Next week it'll be ten percent off, like on yeah, Steam. Exactly. Like, <laughs> and, that, and that's one thing Stephen and I always talked about. He says he doesn't like how Sony doesn't have confidence in their games. Meaning, AKA, they do that. They'll they'll release a game, and within what a month or two, yeah. or sometimes less, or some three months, it goes on sales. That's great. I love that because I wait. I told you, I wait for almost all like Cyberpunk, all those major games. I well, Cyberpunk had a lot of issues at launch. That's one of the other reasons why. It, I waited. I let him iron out, but I don't need these games. I'm not a fuck uh, a teenager anymore, man. I, <laughs> I don't love need the these games swearing. right. It's so funny. What, yeah, I do not need these teen <laughs> these games right at launch, and and smart consumers do that. I mean, money's not an issue for me. Luckily, I could buy them at full price, but why would I waste my money? Just get them cheap, and then on PC and Steam, you could even go to sites that uh, that are legit sites, not illegal sites, guys. We don't ever promote illegal stuff where you get. See uh, keys for substantial less sometimes. So be a smart consumer, man. But you know, each their own. They're entitled to spend the money the way they want. But yeah. But anyways, Ghost has some controversy just like Hell Divers because Sony's requiring them to use their uh, PSN accounts. So yeah. So I wanted I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to just update that. So finally got more information about like why that was all. Um, like such a huge uh, issue type thing to a lot of people. And I kind of get it. I understand both sides of this, this argument. So one is that like the PlayStation network is not available in like over a hundred countries. And so that's the issue. So it's like someone paid for the game, bought the game on steam. And now all of a sudden I can't play it. Yeah, and I, we apologize. Cause we, when I we talked about this a few podcasts ago, we didn't know. I didn't know that, so that's a little bit different. That kind of sucks when you alienate yeah, your consumer but, that already purchased it. Yeah, but there's and this is the part that I'm not clear on is like it, it seems like the game was never supposed to be available in those areas yeah, so then that's where it starts mistakes it starts to get a little bit like that's shady to me especially you know because they're taking in money for months then all of a sudden that that's a bit low blow yeah well and that's it's interesting it. because sony because sony's trying to make an establishment with their brand on pc they've the whole their their massive success and they want to continue momentum but now they're effing up man and it doesn't take long for people to really especially pc gamers right they'll give you the middle finger faster than the than the, uh, what's it called i don't know anyway you know the expression <laughs> yeah. but, but, but the thing is is it's just like uh sony needs to be careful because if you try to establish yourself as a big time player on the pc market you're effing up like this it's well, the good news is the good, good news is this time around, at least with Ghost of Tsushima, it at least appears that the, the game is available where you know it's like supposed PS- to be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So again, th- on that side, I don't blame the company because I keep telling everybody, like for someone like me, I would love to have cross save and to have like cross trophies and stuff. That would be fun, fantastic, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. Um- you remember on Switch, The Witcher Three? You know that game, right? Mm-hmm. I could. I, I have the Steam version. If I ever want to get it on a massive sale on the Switch, I could buy it there and use my save yeah. and play it on the Switch. Tell me that isn't on. I mean, yeah. I don't do handheld gaming on the Switch. No, but, but what doesn't matter? If I but was still, into that, I could sit in my bed or couch and. Well, dude, my, uh, my that's Witcher the whole 3, uh, save. That's the whole appeal of the Steam Deck, right? That's literally yeah, the exactly. whole appeal. Is that like? I can play here, but I can also go sit on my sofa and and play over there. Uh, speaking of this, well, loosely, um, 
Well, two things. One, I don't want to switch subjects, but it's just a reminder for you, Tim, and also for anyone listening. Okay. Uh, Sonoa's Saga Hellblade uh, 2, the preload, oh. is officially on. On Game Pass, by the way. Game 1, by the way. Yeah, game, so I mean, I'm just game, saying... Game, like, game, if you, I gotta be if playing you, that, man. If you have it on your Xbox, or if you have it on PC, uh, it is now... F- the full download is available. It's about 70 gigs, 75 gigs, somewhere around there. Got these games. I know. Um, I remember when I built this PC, I got a 2 gig... 2, two gig, two terabyte hard drive, and I told my buddy, I think I'm gonna get 4. He goes, dude, what the hell? What do you mean you need that much space? But now it's like... It's like... Well, I'm nowhere near half, but it's just amazing if you... If you cause, if you don't uninstall, if you're starting yeah, yeah. for space, you have to download again, uninstall, download, uninstall. So mm-hmm. yeah, I tell you, man, four gig, four terabytes is just gonna be like fire. That's ain't well, enough. Well, dude, <laughs> dude, the more, the more, four K native, four K yeah, exactly. comes into comes into play. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Um. So, anyways, I just wanted a public service announcement for everyone. I downloaded it both on my PC and on my Xbox. Uh, then not sure the original Hellblade did not have cross save. I'm really hoping this one does, uh, just because it's so convenient. That's so convenient to be able to play in multiple, multiple areas with the same save. And by the way, Jared, that's a great idea. And that, cause uh, other channels do this. I would love to kind of like end either end the session or begin the session. We could do like weekly week since we do this next day on Sundays, we could do like the upcoming week of new releases and stuff. That'd be a lot of, He's a lot of fun, I think. We can, uh, yeah, we'll sure. talk about that more offline, but I think that's a great addition to the podcast. Yeah, no, so let sure, us know sure. The, and the it, was, it was a total, that, it was a total fluke on my end. Like uh, I was, I was just like this morning. I was playing some uh, Dragon Quest X, and and you know, I have all my all my loaders that are that are open nah. up there and whatever. And I'm just like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. So I uh, I gave that a download this morning on both, and I'm really. Oh, hoping- so you did record with Current. You yeah, recording yeah, yeah, with Karen yeah, yeah, yeah. this morning? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we do it almost. We 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 record almost every single uh, weekend. It's just that now we have to be a little more strategic because the storyline we're caught up, and the next the next release is only probably in September. So oh, okay. it's it's just yeah, because it gets kind of boring, right? To watch me just do some generic quests and stuff. It's not the not the most exciting. But anyway, um, back to Ghosts of Tsushima. Um, so like you said, Sony has been, Sony's trying right now. I think their strategy is like, they're trying to get more into the PC space and that's cool. Right. Yes. Um, and yeah, like you say, I mean, you know, they're, they're stumbling a little bit here and there and, and stuff like that. One of the biggest issues though, that PC fans have had sure as hell has not been PSN. It has been day one release has been the issue has been the big big issue so like when they released the uncharted uh forget which collection it was but when they released that it was a little like you know it lacked some of the optimization the big one was the last of us people were pissed with that that it just really wasn't optimized well even horizon which like it had the ultra wide you know 4k look looked stunning but it brought your pc to a halt man like no matter what your rig was it was so the good news is especially with horizon they they were able to like fix that really quickly like really quickly they were able to get that up and running hell divers too i've heard nothing but really good things except for this whole this whole psn thing um have you experienced any issues like in terms of optimization or anything like that uh well, Hell Divers. If you guys, if plays on, well, not just Hell Divers, general, but there's a lot of brain breaking bugs in that game. So, uh, uh, Horizons, I'm going to be getting on next sale and playing that. Um, That's, that's a game I really want to do because the, the new one's out on too. So I wanted to get the first one, experience that. I don't know if it's even worth it. Do you think it's worth playing both games? Well, by I the mean, way, I I get them for dirt cheap. So those games are like you know you wait till there's like a seventy percent. So like yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, both I heard heard both are on. Things. Both are on Steam. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, both I didn't know that. Steam. I thought it was oh, only. Uh... Is the second one out yet? The second one's not out. But hold on. I thought it was First the second out. one. I thought it was the second one that was out. No, no, both are out. Okay, because that's last gen. 
Like yeah, the original so. is a last gen title. But anyways, whatever. Yeah. Okay. So the point that I'm trying to make with this is just that from what I've been seeing online and a lot of like reading online, a lot of people have been saying that Ghost of Tsushima, at least right now, there's a couple of quirks here and there, but they're like overall it's an it's a fantastic effort. And I bring this up because Ghosts of Tsushima is probably i think i told you this before like every generation i have one game one game that just really it like sums up the generation and sometimes that's a little hard so i say like sums up the console okay if you will and like during the ps3 era i know there were a lot of hardcore fans of like you know metal gear solid whatever what is it for um there was bioshock there were you know there, there, there like there there are some incredible titles during that generation but for me personally the last of us just blew my mind i'd never played anything like that before like that was just you know leagues better than anything else i had played that generation and this is coming from a guy that adores uncharted and stuff like that like i uh, it's like indiana jones to me i love that but ps4 was this game it was ghost of tsushima that game man i still do not understand how the hell they got this running on ps4 like i, I don't i don't i don't get it and the remaster on ps5 is even better it's faster quicker it's prettier but the fact that this is truly a PS4 game, wait till you if if you if you buy it when it's like two dollars or whatever. Um, like seriously, I will be shocked if you aren't impressed with this. Like it's it's absolutely incredible, incredible game. So the only reason I mention this is because if it is running well on PC and you guys listening, if anyone is like a PC, uh, you know, is a PC gamer, yeah, I know Tim's gonna disagree with me, but I don't care um this is this is a a really this is a phenomenal game like guys if you've been waiting for this don't you don't need to wait for sales like getting it for 59.99 with all the content that it comes with that's that's worth it like that's a that's a great game i don't mind see my golden rule is this jerry that's why i play a lot of co-op games a lot of like multiplayer games player versus player games because you get so much like I, like Killer Clowns is coming up, and I'm gonna buy the 59.99 full full price for it. The reason is I'm gonna get hundreds and hundreds of hours out of this game, right? So let's say I buy the latest Resident Evil, I pay well now probably 69.99 for it. I get 10 hours of gameplay. That's a huge discrepancy in cost versus uh, time. Right? My rule is one hour of gameplay per dollar, meaning if I pay if I pay 60 bucks full price, I better get at least 60 hours of gameplay out of it. Yeah, well, and I'm not one of those type that I have too many games in the back. Like I'm not one of those type that's a purist or completist. I have to do all the achievements, all this. Yeah, this yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I played through it. I play for the story, a single player game. I want to experience the story, and that's it. But if Resident Evil is notorious, what 10, 15 hours best, right? Yeah, well, Am depending, right? it depends on on which one. But you know, because lately they've made them. To be these like sprawling epic sort of things, you know, multi characters, multi chapters, multi yeah like, stuff like that. But to be fair, I haven't played the modern, modern, modern ones like the last Resident Evil. I haven't even played it. I got like when, when the hell am I got time uh-huh. to do that? But with Ghost yeah, of Tsushima, yeah. you get both, eh? Like there's a huge multiplayer okay. component of that as oh, okay. Uh, okay. as well. But anyways, I'm just saying, uh, for me, it's the greatest like it's the greatest samurai game i've ever played like by far i i've ever played so i'm just letting people know if you if if you want that hands down would have been my game of the year that year like oh no doubt in thinking of samurai did you see the trailer for uh ubisoft's new assassin creed it's based in samurai era and i have not actually yeah so i i just i heard about that literally maybe 10 minutes before coming on this I, but people are freaking out i, I what why are people oh, the reason out? is because the african uh person in is based on a real a uh, dude that lived in japan in like 15 1600s but it uh, from what they said it was never documented that he actually became a samurai so ubisoft's marketing pitch is the african descent one of the great kind of samurais da, da, da. but i guess historically Guys, you have to remember, it's just like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the movie or the game. They say based on real events. 
Uh, yeah, take that with a grain of salt. It's well, a marketing phase. It, it the, the, There was never a leather face in real life. He was based on an Ed Gein who they used his persona. The killer, the real life serial killer used to put his victim skin on him. That's where they get the inspiration for Leatherface. There was no Leatherface in real life. So lovely, when they say inspired lovely. by true events, uh, well, it's okay, not a I, I, guys. I would need it's not a documentary. I would need to watch the. Uh, I would need to watch the uh, the trailer. Yeah, look into it so because, like, I know, thing. I know that there's a lot of lore. If you're talking about like a, the like an African samurai type thing, I yeah. but I need to see I, I need to see the thing specifically yeah. because so I know that there's a lot thing. of there's a lot of lore about that. In, we should uh, actually we should have prepped them. We could have showed the trailer, but yeah, so that's the biggest thing is hist- quote unquote historians are very upset that uh, they're misleading people. But wow, they're not. Uh, you mean a movie industry, the video game misleading? Never. Of course. Never what are you talking about? An Italian right? plumber that eats mushrooms and like grows yeah. inside. Oh, that ain't a That's totally time, based right? on reality. What are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. Um, but anyways, okay, well, I, I, I'll have to watch the thing to, to see. But, I mean, there there's a lot of lore. So I don't know why historians, that doesn't really make any sense unless the time period is off or something. Because there's a lot of oh, lore no, it's just, uh, of, of an uh, African samurai so i don't yeah that that's well, the, the just, chances uh, are that's real so i don't know why people would be freaking oh, out no the it. character the african guy was real he was a real life person now the, the japanese samurai counterpart in the game is totally fictional but the thing is ubisoft is saying that he was a samurai and i guess in real life he never achieved that rank Okay, I don't. I really, I have no idea. Yeah. So, uh, just yeah, interesting. We don't know. Okay, very interesting. Um, and of course, like the big thing for everybody here. I mean, the big, big, big thing that you all heard, and what I wanted to talk about last week uh, was, of course, about some of these uh, studio closures. We had a couple of yes. studio closures, and everybody flipping out, and you know, like you and I spoke about this a little bit, and it was like. What I what I was trying to get across in our in our text was one of the big problems that micro oops that Microsoft's game division has and and what I want to really specify that the game division I'm not I'm not saying Microsoft as a whole uh, or anything like that but their game division over the last my goodness like 20 years or so has been kind of like a, a why like a fork in the road they've seen the future xbox live uh, xbox game pass like things like that like they've seen where the industry is going now with xbox live that's very i still stand by the fact that that's very very arguable because a lot of og xbox uh employees were from sega of america so was it really you know xbox that saw the future was it like the sega guys because like if you really do go back sega guys. if you do go back i mean sega was so ahead of its time in so many different oh, yeah. ways yeah so many like, different ways dude but but very interestingly when a lot of those 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 people moved over to microsoft the timing was right you know what I mean? Like it was like what they were trying to do with the Saturn and with the Dreamcast and different in different areas and stuff like that. I feel like everything came together with the OG Xbox. Like the timing was right. Infrastructure was now at a point where you could do real gaming, digital storefronts on a console were possible and all anyways, all that kind of stuff. And what I was saying when I saw this news, it, it wasn't about the closures. And I know a lot of folks reading online, a lot of YouTube videos out there like Microsoft's the devil and, you know, all this sort of stuff. The thing with, with them where I would love to have audited the Xbox game division. I would have loved to have done this and audited it not from a uh, finance standpoint, but from a management standpoint. Because uh, I've been saying because there is a difference. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, and this is why this is this is what it's hard to get across in text. Like I wasn't, I'm not debating the solvency of the company, right? Like I'm not debating whether or not they're making cash or anything like that. But they've been making some very, very, very peculiar um, 
Oh, hold on a second. What is going on? What happened? That's weird. Or did you stop recording? No, no, no. We just froze. We froze for just a second. I don't know why. It was as if Teams uh, gave an update. It's okay. It's all right. Um, anyways, good thing I noticed that. Um, oh. So, so I've been saying for years, like, they've had a management problem at, at Microsoft's Xbox game, whatever you want to call it, division for a while now. And it's it's becoming harder and harder to ignore. And it's not about the closures, but the closures... I think, I mean, look, let's be honest. Like, that's a lot of people that are out of jobs. I'm very sorry for everybody that lost their job. That really sucks, okay? Like, there's no there's no question about that. I'm not, that's not what I'm talking about here. But I don't know what people know what I do for a living outside of, well, I don't make money off these videos, really. <laughs> it's not, it's <laughs> not this. Um, but, like, my entire career has been in management and in process improvement and... Uh, organizational design so what that means is basically going into companies and restructuring not the people but the organizational like processes who reports to whom what are these people doing and you know blah 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 and so it's just it's super interesting to me and i witnessed it when they bought rare right when they bought rare all those years ago i was like why did you do that? Right? Like, what was the underlying reason? Now, there's there's a lot, right? Like, so Perfect Dark at the time, there was a lot of hype that people wanted that. Rare had a lot of different IPs and stuff like that. And not it only did, that, yeah. not only that, but there are some really legendary, you know, the Stamper Brothers, like legendary developers that had worked there. And then we got grabbed by the ghoulies. You know what I mean? Like, we started to get really bizarre releases and stuff like that. We got Conker's Bad Fur Day, but it was like the Xbox Live, like, you know, like enhanced version or whatever. But it had been censored, which didn't even make any sense considering it's Microsoft. Like, what the hell? And some of it has to do with... Tim, what you had said to me in the text where they had let the studios be. And that can actually be a problem. Now, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, it's it's not... There's micromanaging. That's never good. That's never, never good when, when you interfere with, like, the, the creative process and this and that and everything else. But Rare is such a good example to talk about because why did microsoft buy them right like like and i don't mean that yeah, from exactly from microsoft standpoint is why was rare available to be bought and that's the thing that like people don't always connect the dots if you go back in time nintendo had slowly started to lose faith in rare in rare they had seen that the quality of some of the titles that they had released was either starting to diminish and or the sales weren't achieving the same level of success that they had previously and through that led to this eventual buyout but that's just one you know that's just one example if we look recently you can see that there's some there's some disconnects going on. I'm not going to talk about the whole th the fiasco of like the uh, what was it the Xbox, uh, what was it, one? Yeah, the Xbox One. That was a friggin' nightmare. That that they well they pretty much did fire everyone that was involved in that. Yeah, it is interesting with Rare because dude, it's like Rare Hat was. Maybe you're right. Maybe Nintendo knew what the writing was on the wall, and they didn't want to buy them. But if you look historically, Nintendo's not one to buy a lot of companies. If you notice that, and which is weird because you think they would eat up like because Rare was kind of like Disney's, the Nintendo's Pix, uh, Pixar, right? Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, well, this is this gym. Now look at Pixar today. It's it's nowhere near the company that it used to be as well. So, uh, but but, but keep following that, Tim. But, Tim, keep following that train of thought, okay? Because I want to show you guys something. Yeah. So, because it's, you know, I was gonna say real quick. Yeah, yeah, go, you, go, go, go ahead. No, 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 go, go. I was gonna say, Rare hit, did hit gold mine with um, Sea of Thieves, but 
it's like that's pretty much it the last several years i mean they've had Dude. killer instinct but killer instincts is it killer instinct wasn't it's, rare they didn't make it yeah exactly. it was made by another yeah. studio and sea of thieves was a colossal failure they had to first, rework yeah they had to, yeah they had to rework almost the whole game in order to get it to to the state it is now but yeah i got another studio and again these are just little signs okay that something is up again i don't work for microsoft i have no personal connections with the company like specifically with with the xbox uh you know folks but i can tell you from a management standpoint there is definitely something going on and there has been something going on for a very long time and i don't know if it's because you know like uh like Xbox Game Pass, I got a lot of good press. Maybe like the, the the leadership of the whole organization was just like, okay, let them be. You know what I mean? Or like, you know, they're they're slowly turning it into a profit. Let them be. We're good. Like it's yeah. all good. I don't know what the case is, because but but there is something I want to say here that's interesting. You know the studio Insomniac Games. Yeah, I re- yeah, exactly. So I Ratchet that. and Clank, all these huge yeah. things. Sony never bought them. And why? And then, like in the past, okay? Sony didn't buy these guys. And then I remember all the fanboys, everybody freaking out when it came out that they were going to be making their first Xbox game. And I said right away, Microsoft is going to buy them. Like, guaranteed. It's, it's, that's Microsoft style, is to go, you know, and, and buy them. And they released their game. I forget what it was called now. And it bombed on on Xbox. I don't remember if it was 360 or 1. I don't remember at the time. And then they come back to Sony. Right? Well, they never left, technically. They, they were still making Ratchet and Clank. And they were still doing, you know, the odd thing here and there. And then I knew it right away. Like, they made Spider-Man. And I was like, now Sony is not going to take the chance. And they didn't. They bought them out right away. They were like, nope, you're ours now. But that's another sign on Microsoft's part. Like, what happened with that? Like, what happened there? Yeah. Like, that yeah. doesn't make... This is a world-class studio. Then, yeah. look at it Bungie, is- man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Bungie... It's weird, it's weird. them on the map. It, you know, it, I think you said it is a management problem. Because, you well, guys, you have to remember one thing. Microsoft's a huge corporation. The main bulk of its are, of their income is... Uh, is PC driven, so they're never going to be a true gaming company. But their job is corporate, because you remember there's different layers and umbrellas. It's corporate is its job is to make sure that they put the right leadership yeah, in their exactly. sub companies. Because the huge guys, like let's let's pretend Bill Gates was still there. Yeah, Everyone yeah. knows that Bill Gates, if he was still in the company, he would never be managing these guys yeah, correctly. Yeah. That's yeah. not his job. All the huge C-level guys at Microsoft, they don't worry about that. Yeah. Their responsibility is make sure that their gaming people, their gaming division leadership executives are doing the right thing. And that's where I think they're failing. Yeah, no, I, I mean, agreed. I, no, dude, Tim, that's kind of what I'm getting at, right? Like, so I've been looking, yeah. like, for this podcast, well, technically for last week's podcast, and I was looking through, that's what I was texting you. I was like, my God, man, like, when you actually start to do the research and you start to look and you're like, holy crap, like... They worked with Insomniac Games, a world-class yeah, yeah. developer, and they were not able to get a hit. Why? Like yeah, that doesn't yeah. that it, doesn't it, make any any sense at all. Then there's so many variables too. You have to remember too. I mean, do we remember their marketing strategy? It could be a lot of no, no, like of course, a hundred percent. It could be a lot and, of things. But who's to blame? Yeah, exactly. When... And another thing too is, I think you alluded to in text, and we'll talk about. It. I don't think, I think Microsoft does is buy these stuff, and they don't, like you said, they don't reinvest. It's like, okay, you guys do your shit on yeah. your own, get it done. Oh, there's a problem. Then we start going in there and mm. micromanaging or closing studios. But I think you're right. I don't think, that, and and it kind of fits what big corporations do, man. It's like they buy stuff, well, not all, and they say, okay, I bought you, Jared, and your studio. Well. You guys, make us money. We'll talk to you. Yeah. Oh, you're making us money. We're happy. Oh, you're not. Ooh, Jared, you've been a bad leader. <laughs> it, so that's yeah, what yeah. I'm trying to say is 
they don't get i don't th- and that's typical when you have large corporations no it is it is it is 100 percent. it's what what has been a little perplexing though to me yeah. is that it's been a while like this is yeah. not like the last two years it's not exactly. that they closed tango whatever i forget i'm so sorry guys i can't remember the the studio name they were the guys that did the evil within and the hi-fi yeah. rush and all those uh, games i forget what they were called tango works or something like that yeah. um it's it was it's long before that i look at it i'm like gears of war right made by epic games gears of war huge freaking hit man huge one two three release like clockwork boom 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 done but made by epic games the minute made by microsoft xbox game division it's been a bloody disaster it's been nothing but a disaster and it's every single one of their their games there's not a single success story they've had of internal like game i'm not talking necessarily sales per se okay halo halo still sells millions of units but bungie leaves number one just that how the hell did you allow that to happen that like i don't even understand that but then you create, what is it, 343 Industries or whatever? It has been a nightmare since day one. Since day one, it's been a nightmare. And Gears of War brought in-house. Nothing but a disaster. It's just, I don't get it. I just don't understand. Now, this this last bunch of layoffs and stuff like that is a little bit different. It's not the same, it's not the same thing. It's a little perplexing because they did announce that it's Hi-Fi Rush, right? Is that what the game was yeah. called? Yeah. They announced a yeah, no. breakthrough hit for them on Twitter and stuff. Nine days. And then they close. And then they close the studio. Weird. And that is weird. That's like, I don't get it. And then the president of the division, who's at corporate, okay? So not not uh, not Jack Ryan. What is his name there? Whatever his name is. the guy, Not the guy running the division, but his boss, who oversees like the Xbox stuff plus the... Bill and and anyway it was so funny she's like yeah we don't we don't have the resources to take care of all of these all of these companies and then they're just sitting there you're like wait wait what like so you just spent yeah because it's kind of billions kind of by the way they hired her what's her name she's very uh she's had a lot of success and even i believe if i remember call of duty so she's managed some big big hits for other companies so it's gonna be interesting she could she's new so she hopefully she'll bring some good things but yeah you're right it's like uh it's like microsoft's investing so bi- not millions guys but billions, billions of dollars in becoming establishing their game presence but uh they just oh they they've had like you said the hi-fi was a critically came nominated for game of the year stuff like that but other than that, you're right. They've had a lot of massive, like, uh, like you know, like Star Field or whatever it's called. That was kind of like, like a little feedback. I don't think it did as good, but the, yeah. the other worlds. So yeah, it, it it they they have a lot of great IPs, but it's just and then like you when they bought Blizzard, Blizzard survival game, which everyone was looking forward to, that they've been work Blizzard been working on six years canned. Yeah. Now that could be a lot of reasons. Yeah, yeah. Know. Um, sometimes uh, developing companies or developers get into a project and it just never comes concrete and then they go it's been developed six years they could have gone to microsoft oh we need another three four five years yeah and microsoft's like really you don't have much to show for it so we don't know yeah yeah we don't know is, yeah microsoft needs to i think they need to get good leadership at their well some, root what, level what, to, what uh, i see from again outside looking in right like i mean i can't you know we don't know any anything else there but outside looking in is they don't seem to be managing the game content so gears of war that's what i was just doing gears of war 5 came out in 2019 on a and it ends on a cliffhanger <laughs> where where's the next one like i yeah. don't i don't yeah i, I don't get it it does, you think it's going to be on their next system? 
But why? Why would you do that? And I look at Hellblade 2, right? So, again, plug for Hellblade. I really, I love the original. Hellblade 2 was the first game. First game announced for the Xbox Series X. It, it, it doesn't add up. Like, it just doesn't add up. I understand teasing and stuff like that. I'm all for that. You know, like, that makes sense. This... This doesn't make sense. This is like, what is happening with the Xbox Game Studios? Not yeah. not the division necessarily, not the corporate, not all that, but something something is 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 weird. I mean, they spent yeah. billions. Are we gonna have to now wait forty two years for Fallout Five? Yeah, that- yeah, it's the same thing. Like we discuss a lot of times. Like they just uh, uh, there's the, oh by the way, uh, the Xbox I think next month event's coming up, and it looks like they're going to announce another Call of Duty. But see, Activision Blizzard I think is going to be a really good buy for them because one uh, it added to their profits obviously. Two, uh, Candy Crush and all those type of games are huge, man. Yeah, yeah. People yeah, don't yeah. realize how much that little piece of crap. No disrespect if you love it. That game makes more Whoa. money for Activision Blizzard than anything else. It, you think about it. It's a mobile game. Whoa. It's literally free to play, but yet it makes a ton of money. But anyways, uh, Call of Duty, you know, is going to be a massive hit. Games like that, Call of Duty, there's always going to be your Call of Duty. We, we don't have to worry about that. That's going to be the first Call of Duty on Xbox Game Pass, though. Day one stuff. So that's going to be a lot of exciting news. And um, any future, like, Diablo stuff as well. But if you look at Blizzard, and I'd love to talk about them because if you look at them historically they've never been they're very slow at releasing content they're very small they don't really i mean overwatch is in the first 20 years of a new ip mm-hmm. i was really looking forward to the survival game that's can they do they are developing a new game but we'll see if that ever gets to, uh to the see this the day of light or whatever it's called and if it's canceled now it's supposed to be story driven which i love so that if you think about it, blizzard's never really been if you I mean, they tell a great epic story over time with it. Wow, uh, their strategy games technically had a campaign, but I, I hope they do a proper R, R, uh, RPG type game. They've never really had that, at least not for a long, long time. So, what do you think about that, though? Do you notice that Blizzard's kind of like a weird company? Well, they Bl- don't Blizzard, really know? Blizzard's always been kind of like the modern day, um, uh, what are they called? Uh, Rockstar like you yeah. know one game seven yeah, years well, yeah, or whatever you know yeah, type exactly. thing um it's, but it, it works if you have that perpetual revenue scheme right like if you're constantly making yes. money then pff, and who they cares? Are, yeah. like whatever i'm very curious to see what is going to happen now i'm really yeah, yeah, exactly. really I curious want, i want i mean the activision side is going to be fine they have big huge guns that they're going to milk to death like i said well, call yeah, but, of duty but remember remember it's not not necessarily a question of that because look at gears of war look at all these they yeah, halo well, they, yeah, they, they had them, why don't they but their problem think, but, is in managing them so this is why i'm i'm very curious like if all of a sudden we stop getting a call of duty every year that's going to be interesting man it's going to be very interesting because to me, this has been Microsoft's biggest problem. There, it makes no sense to me that you have an entire console generation that is coming to an end and or fine, whatever. Even if you want to say a halfway point or more than a halfway point, whatever. You had one Halo that was just critically panned. I actually really enjoyed it, but whatever. It was like... People were like, well, what is this? The player base like basically vanished overnight. Zero Gears of War. Not a single one. Even though the last one ended on a cliffhanger, so that doesn't even make sense. You've had, you know, like this, like Hellblade 2 coming out next week. It makes no sense. It's been like five years that it like just vanished out of thin air. And now I know that people are going to start to talk and be like, okay, well what now so i'm curious to see that event i'm really curious to see i that am event. i'm really gonna look and we we need to do a podcast for that oh for sure man for sure because like and... halo freaking perfect dark was announced like almost three years ago now where is it you know like um and and 
that, that's another thing too, Jared. We have to also remember. And Nintendo, remember, we talked about I think last podcast where, or did we? I think we did. Where Nintendo announced that they s- said development for the games are going to increase mm-hmm. now. So that's another issue. But then AI is supposed to make everything faster and smoother. So it's going to be interesting because that's why, like EA, wants to the regenerative or generative AI. They can't wait to get it in their game. So it's going to be interesting to see what the future is. If it's true that a lot of triple, I think a lot of triple A games are going to be a lot less going forward. Well, that, even Sony said that. Well, dude, Sony's and, uh, Sony's been doing it. Like, look this year. There is not a single yeah, yeah, first party yeah, game. Yeah. They just literally vanished. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I tell you it's the rise of uh, of double A games, which are you know they're not quite the same level, but they're respectful, and you can do a lot of great things. Yeah, with and, and that's no, why indie games are so big right well, now, dude. Of course, and and like let's not forget that like the minute that these types of tools start to really you know come to fruition or whatever, it's game over, man. Then then all of a sudden today's triple A games become tomorrow's double A games. Come. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, like sort of deal. But so, you, you did say before, you know, Microsoft has a gajillion dollars. That's the thing that I don't get. That's the part that confuses me. How the hell was Sony able to get The Last of Us Part Two, brand new games like Ghost of Tsushima, two Ratchet and Clank games, and I mean, it yeah, goes that's on and on. They, Uncharted, they, and how are they doing? You it? know what? You know, Sony, I think smart. Well. In that regards, they seem to get more hits than Microsoft. Or Microsoft's see this is, again. This is a this is a typical big corporation that's not a game. That's I told you, Microsoft's still not a gaming company, mm-hmm. even though they're investing a lot. Their their DNA is tech. Their DNA is PC uh, corporate uh, enterprise. That's their yeah, DNA. yeah, of course. So have, their top level C guys understand that, but they don't understand. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They need to get the right leadership at their studio levels to feed up. I agree, dude. dude. And I, that's, agree. I don't think that's happening because they're not that type of company. People have to remember that. They make a ton of money besides their gaming stuff. Yeah. And I think that's the big disconnect. And two, um, uh, I, I just think that they don't have the right people going after right studio. What I mean is maybe they don't need to buy so much. Maybe they could go after smaller developers that have great passion, that do great work and, oh, look, like this. Kind of like a hockey, right? Where you have a great scouting department that goes after talent. That's what I think Microsoft needs. Stuff like that. Because, like, Sony seems to be really focused and do... And for, we have to also remember, Sony's an electronic company, too. Yeah, so, yeah. They, they must have really good leadership at that, well, that to, well, the thing level. With, with them, they, they're... I think they've 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 pivoted now. Like if you look and yeah, you yeah. look at the, they basically are a video game company today yeah. and, a, and a Hollywood uh, studio. But basically, like their electronics, it, that's crazy to me that their electronics yeah. aren't their their bread and butter. On, it's crazy. Yeah. That's we wild. grew up on Sony TVs, Walkman. Yeah, just, exactly. Now look at it. Yeah, it's crazy. But anyway, whatever. So the Sony's case, done an excellent job with that. They have done an excellent job. They, they've done truly. They've done an excellent job with that. However, I do think <clears throat> that management, or at least the financial guys, realize it's not sustainable. It's just not sustainable. You like Ghost of Tsushima, right? Like that. It's been what did I say? I don't remember, but. PlayStation 4, so it's been like, what, five years? Six years that that yeah, game yeah, has been, been out. Sucker Punch hasn't done anything since. We don't know yeah, anything. And, and, this, and this is the issue with when you go to these big, huge AAA games. They take too long to make. Well, that's Just like thing. MMOs. I told you, MMOs, seven yeah. to ten years of develop. Oh, God, who was I? I have to get that article. And I want to, it's the one of the Fallout guys, uh, developers, and he was talking about how difficult, there's three, three things he covered how difficult it is to make games work one the cost two how long it takes and then three you're making absolutely no income during the development yeah and that's why big wigs are rushing games out getting stuff in early access because they want to see triple a games you can't do early access you have to release a good product that's our finished product that's why a lot of these triple a games get released and they're freaking garbage yeah so many issues it's because the big wigs We've been spending seven years, spending yeah, 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 a hundred million dollars, and we haven't got to get it out now. Yeah, they don't care about. Oh, we need more time. No, out yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, dude, I, and dude, you're yeah. like, I am. Big, 
issue of this. I am technically working for a software development company right now, right? Like my company, technically speaking, is a software development company. And and I see it, man. Scope creep is real. And it is so hard to fight. You have no idea how many times I go in and and we're like, oh my God, that would be so good. If the user did this, this, we'll be able to tweak this, this, and that. Yeah. Let's go, guys. Okay, but that's two months of development costs, and that's going to take another 400000 in order to do that. And then you're like, hmm, right? Now, yeah, I, you see? No. Like, yeah. I can only imagine with gaming, I can only imagine. Because if it happens yeah. at my, our tiny little company with 10 employees, imagine with like 500. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, my, and like I said, the big ones, because you have to remember all these studios at the end of the day have to get funding, some kind of funding or approval from the big guys. Yeah. And they're going to be like, really? Do we really need that? We have to spend that much? Yeah. It's a, And he said it's a huge challenge. Well, because it. that's why early access, I told you, early access kind of ruins gaming. But the reason they, they release it is because they need income, dude. Yeah. It's like it, it, you spend all this money, and you're getting nothing. Yeah. And if you're a new established studio too it's, it's difficult right That's yeah no dude 100 percent. and i think this is why like you know you get all these discussions about sony um with pc and and all of this and i'm like guys 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 i'm like let's be honest i think sony and microsoft and and everyone else to be honest has realized that the era of the triple a game it's not that it's over per se but the way it was it's be, it is it's over, over yes. and and now like why do you like like this how much did it really cost sony to get horizon and ghost of tsushima and uncharted and all those games onto pc i guarantee you it is a fraction of the cost of building a brand new game like a, yeah, a lot of times Exactly. You have to also remember a lot of these game engines are universal too, right? Like let's use, I don't know if they don't use Unity, but if they use Unreal Engine, yeah, yeah, yeah. that could be on console and PC. So it's not coding wise, it's not particularly challenging because you could recompile it on whatever platform you want. There's yeah. still, you know, optimizations, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. etc. Yeah. Make no mistake, but it's not like Oh, we spent a hundred million making it on console. Oh, we need another hundred million to make it on the PC. No, it's not like that at exactly. all. Exactly. So you're right. The difference isn't that. No, no. Skill, but. And and let's also let's let's call it what it is. There, like today, consoles are PCs. Yeah, like, exactly. I mean, it's it's difference. almost the exact infrastructure and and everything. So so my point with this is that I do think is a huge reason why Sony now is embracing PC because it's like, okay, so we sold all these copies on the PlayStation and yes, you know, by now they're probably making money off, off the hardware too. So you're making, you know, you got multiple ways of making income, but you and I have talked about this honestly for years of like, I don't know why people didn't jump on PC sooner. I don't Race. get it. Yes, exactly. Like last gen, every game should have been on PC. Everything. Exactly. Because they were and already yeah. PCs. Like, and I don't. I still don't understand that, dude. Uh, like Sony's starting to come around, but it's like Nintendo could be making so much more money. Well, don't Nintendo, you think, dude? Or they, you don't think so? It's because you think Nintendo their games will do well. Nintendo has a monopoly over its own market. And true that that monopoly, it's like it's a self feeding prophecy <laughs> where could they make more money? Absolutely. Yes, it could. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. But I think to them, it's more important. They remind me of Apple in a lot of ways. No, they are. I was going to say that they they want control. Yeah, and I understand. I respect that. Yeah. But money, and you say it's a Western thought, but their executives at the end of the day is like, they want to make more money too, right? Well, I mean, no, no, no. Well, no, no. That's not a Western thing. Look, Sony. Sony does that. Toshiba. Yeah. All the, you know, all the other ones. Panasonic. All them. But it's, it's more. I think Nintendo is like, Nintendo's different. Like they, they've, they've just, they've it, got a monopoly. They're very different. And also not only that, but they've worked extremely hard to protect their brand and IPs. Like they, they, people trust their brands. Mario, Zelda. I think their executives probably feel if they put it on PC, they lose a bit of that. Meaning, you can have toxicity or toxic environments. Well, dude, I think you, I think you yeah. said it. I think it's, it's just if they were to do something like that, 
they would lose control. Point for now. Like, end of discussion. It, that, that, that's it. That That's that's the end of the discussion. Like, they don't want you modding their games. They don't want, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. They want you... I mean, guys, they released a console that you have to do voice chat through your phone. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. That's, yeah, all, that's all I gotta I'm say. say. Yeah. And like, we've had many discussions on that bullshit, but we, thinking of Nintendo... Subject. We need to do a podcast on our our expectations and our predictions on Switch Two. Will it be a huge hit? What will it be like? And I'm I think just a preview of my thoughts for that podcast is I don't think it'll be as well. I think successful. I, I think I mean I've, I've spoken you know like with Stephen about this, spoken with you about this, and everything. Number one, they cannot, 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 and they won't make a repeat of the wii u in other words it has to be no the wii u was very very special circumstance the, if they would have called that system anything else it would have sold over 20 million units i i'm yeah. willing to to not put my life on it but i'm willing to stand that's a hill i will die on i would fight yeah for that. and it, i remember people i remember even at work where people said the wii u what says is that a that the Wii's? They didn't even know. You're right. And that, that's a meme, but it's true. A lot of people didn't know it was a new system. Well, that's they the thing. If they would have called yeah. it Nitro, if they would have called it Slappy Jacks, if they would have called it whatever, I guarantee you they would have been able to sell another around 10 million units only because people would have been like, oh, it's something new type of thing. So as long as they don't do something stupid like Switch Plus, or something like that. Get rid of the Switch name. Maybe call it Switch 2 is the only thing I think. Like, it's it, okay, it, it, it but really, even that. It, it's dangerous because, like, I get it. The Switch now has become almost like a brand in itself. Yes, yeah, so they want to. Yeah. And all of that. And, yeah, the, you you do want to keep some of that, but it's a that's a gamble. That's a big gamble. The only way to really do that is it would have to be night and day different like you would need like or or do that switch to you know like make it evident that, that this is work like okay a, a, like a definitely because playstation a does that yeah, yeah. switch to i mean playstation one two yeah. so that might work switch to switch three which i think might be the best i don't know why nintendo never kind of did that with their systems right because everyone else well xbox doesn't do it i guess but sony's well. stuck and it's been extremely successful. Well, I think them, right? Sony, I don't know, whoever's idea that was, like, way back in the day, like, I, I hope they had a successful career. Because yeah. I think that, from a marketing and everything standpoint, has been the easiest thing in the world to market. It's the next one. Period. That's it. <laughs> Nintendo tried with their first three consoles, right? Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and originally Ultra Nintendo 64. I but, remember that. But that would never... Like, what would the next machine been called? Omega Nintendo, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, eventually, they, they were running out of... They were running out of names, and I'm positive that's why they, they said, you know what? Drop the Ultra. We don't... Because then people are going to get so confused. Like, what what's what's after Ultra? You know? Supreme. Magical. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Let's hope, name. Let's hope they do a good job of naming. I, I personally think they should just do Switch 2. Because they're obviously going to keep the hybrid format. I also hear that the new Joy-Cons are going to be magnetic. So they go... Mm -hmm. like, yeah. like uh the new power supply connector for apple is so that'd be kind of interesting yeah that would be kind of cool i mean but it, i think the reason why i start with the name is because they have a history now like like there is history where we saw the failure of the wii u a lot of that you know people can say whatever they want but a lot of that came to marketing and the fact that like the general public thought it was just an add-on for the wii that that's why i say like with the switch it's like we got to make sure that it's easily differentiable. If they do that, yes. then it's all going to come down to the games. It's yes. really going to come down to that. And Nintendo does traditionally a really good job with their games, even though they milk their core IPs. I mean, when's the last besides Splatoon? Where's the last? Um, well, they don't make all their games. Where's the last F Zero? Everyone asks them. Where's F Zero? Remember. Uh, that snowboarding game, yeah, Wave Racer 2. 
Where's all that stuff, man? It's F-Zero's a, a franchise they could... Re- I mean, they have that F-Zero 99 right now. It's actually a lot of fun, by the mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. But it's like they don't... They're, they're very conservative with their well, IPs. It, it, and it's, now- it's interesting because you're the guy that used to say all the time, like, oh, my God, they just milk IPs all the time. Well, um, I'm talking about their core ones, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, besides Splatoon, what's the last new IP for Nintendo? Oh, Animal Crossing, but that's years old now, too. Yeah, they but, do it once, so they, but they, they, they don't. They, them, they do, like I've said forever, they do what they want to do, and clearly people like what they want to do. You know what I mean? I think right now, just by the way things are looking, I think a 3D Mario is in the works for sure, because um, oh. the timing seems right for that last time we got zelda right like we that that was like the big thing but i i think this year i think we might get surprised guys it might be that mario's back and i would love that i would love but that. didn't they just didn't they just release some mario yeah but not a 3d wonders oh not 3d yet. yeah i'm saying that like wouldn't it be cool guys wouldn't it be cool to have the super switch the switch to the whatever you want to call it with a Mario with a box. Mario game ready for day one. Now that that's been a while, actually. Yeah, it's been a it, it's right? frig, man. It's been what since has it been? GameCube came out with Luigi's Mansion. If yeah, I that doesn't right? count. Then, uh, that doesn't count. We what did we launch with the the sports game? Yeah, it didn't have a Mario at launch, right? Yeah, so uh, Wii wait a U, sec, what wait, did wait, Wii U have? GameCube, or did it? GameCube, Wii, Wii U, no, no, no. Um, Wii U, and, no. Wii so, that? oh my gosh, Switch Mario did, 64. Did Switch? No, so it's Mario 64 was the last time a Nintendo console launched with a Mario game. Wow. So that would be cool. Yeah, that that'd would be, be cool. cool. Going there really. Interesting. Because I, I think so. I know people have been talking about Zelda and stuff. Like, no, impossible. It's impossible. No, they just released one too. No, so that's what I'm saying. It's not possible. Like maybe you get like a, a Tears of the 2D. Kingdom DX version or something like that. Like a you know. But I. I oh I, what? I don't think so. And what about this? Since Mario Kart Eight was a port, what about a Mario Kart? Of yeah, maybe, maybe a brand new one. Yeah. That'd be kind of fun. Maybe, but I, I mean that. Eight may- sold a shit. A shit Dude, it's the number problems. one selling game on the Switch. Yeah. Still to this day, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. But for me, personally, I'm just saying, like, as Jared, I would love, love to have a 3D Mario game at the launch, yeah, available yeah. for the launch. Of the, that would be, just for nostalgia's sake, that would be cool. Like, that would be pretty cool. And then we talk about success, that would be successful. I guarantee you. Oh, yeah, that, that would be would successful be... at launch, but I'm talking, like, long term. I don't think they can match Switches. Well, I think Switch, record. I think Switch had the pandemic help yeah, yeah exactly that. like the pandemic really did help Helped the, the novelty of taking the platform and going like like the, the hybrid nature really helped to uh for me it changed my whole way of gaming now like i love being able to just go and sit on the sofa i never would have bought the steam deck yeah, or yeah, the yeah. portal or i never would have bought yeah, any yeah. of that and Steven, uh, I asked him if he's going to get the next uh, next gen consoles. He said, "Well, if Nintendo keeps it like the Switch, he will." But he's not interested in a dead. Well, at least he said at the time he's not interested in the old traditional consoles. Well, they will though. They will. Oh my goodness, we're already past our hour. Okay. Oh yeah, so. yeah. So, all right, people. Well, listen. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed. Sorry about that, but at least we uh, we're back, and we should be back regular now, unless one of us takes vacation or something like that. Aha! Uh-huh. We know Jared's likely excuses, guys. Uh-huh. I love the way he always says this. All right, guys. Hey, you know. All right, guys. Bye. <laughs> bye.